I just tried a fiber laser engraver and it was crazy. I burned holes, I set things on fire, I broke the rules and really struggled at first. But after I followed these three steps, I was able to have some success. Step number one, start small. I immediately jumped into engraving something large like this ruler. I engraved it on metal and I learned a lot of things. The first thing I learned is when you're doing text, you need to make sure you set it as fill and not as an outline. On this first try, it just outlined the 3D printing zone. Once I switched it to fill and turned the power up, you can see it does a lot better. I wanted to see how it would work with cork. I've seen people engrave on cork for like coasters, the hot pads you put pans on, and that's where things went wrong. I had the settings turn up all the way, I clicked start, smoke started to flow everywhere, my house fire alarm went off, my kids were screaming, my wife was like, what is going on? After that happened, I had to put the engraver in my garage where there's no smoke detector, no fire alarm, so that we can continue printing. And then I decided, let's start off small. Let's print off a little sheet where we just do small prints at first. So in summary, start off small. Step number two is start low and slow. And what I mean is when it comes to power, turn that power down. I had my speed set at 100 millimeters per second and my power at 100, which was just way too powerful. That looks pretty terrible. My text is backwards for some reason and it's just melting the plastic. I'm using what's called PLA, which is a material that you can use in 3D printers. Instead of melting the plastic, I want to just lightly engrave where it almost looks like I'm painting across it. So I ran a ton of tests. I went from speeds of 10 up to 1000 and then from power Power from 10 up to 100. So what I found worked best was actually taking the power up to 100%, but also taking my speed up to 1000. I could get similar results going slower, but if I'm looking to manufacture something or if I want to do things quickly, having it at high speeds and high power, getting a better result or similar result is going to be better for me. Time is money. My ultimate goal today is to figure out how to get a nice clean engraving on the back of this phone case. This is a phone case that I printed with PLA. Again, that's that 3D printing material, and I'd love to enhance this print with some laser engraving. Now that I have my settings dialed in, it's almost time to start printing on this phone case. But before I do that, let's try laser engraving a potato. Right. Hey, watch it! So I did one pass on this potato and it didn't seem to do much. We're gonna slow the power down a little bit and go again. Okay, this next one looks a lot better. With this experiment with the potato, I realized that the further away the laser got, the better it engraved. And that brings us to step three, stay focused. You stay focused. With this MOPA laser engraver, you're supposed to align the three dots to be one dot, and that means it is focused. I found the best way to really see if it's focused or not is to start an engraving with like 10 passes. Have it go a little slower and as it's going raise and lower the laser until you can see that it's getting that result that you want. I did that with this lightning bolt and it's pretty cool. Now something really crazy as I was going through and engraving this lightning bolt is the sound of the laser on metal. It's, it's just crazy. I can't even explain it. Listen to this. I have other laser engravers, but this one is different because it's a Omtech MOPA 20 watt split fiber laser engraver. Man, that's a mouthful. My other laser engraver is an Xtool M1. It's like most laser engravers you might see today where it follows a path on a gantry going left and right, forward and backward, and just making one line at a time. This fiber laser engraver uses mirrors to focus the laser where it needs to print instead of having to move the whole head. One advantage of that is it can move so fast. I believe this one's rated at 10,000 millimeters per second. When I do it at 10,000, I can't even see it. It moves so fast. Although it's only 20 watts, it can still engrave and cut thin pieces of metal. With my other laser engraver, despite it being a 20 watt as well, because it's not a MOPA split fiber laser engraver, I can't cut stuff like this, or at least it would take a very long time. This laser engraver does it in one pass. If you'd like to purchase the Omtech laser engraver, we'll put a link down below. Not only does that help out the channel, but it will give you a discount on that laser. Before we engrave the phone case, I gotta tell you about a rule I broke. It says don't engrave wood, and that's because there's a chance of a fire. Let's test that out and see what it can do. Okay, so there's the phone case design on wood. It didn't start a fire, but I also turned the power down. Now let's turn the power up. Oh man. Look at that, we have fire. I can definitely see why this would be an issue, especially if you're in closed doors and you have a fire alarm or you know, you're not supposed to have fires in there. So just be careful, this is a very powerful laser. Okay, now that we've started low, we've started slow and we're focused. Let's try printing on the little square again. 
Wow, that looks so good. It looks so clean. I think we're almost ready. Now, something I noticed about this engraver is it doesn't like lighter materials. I tried engraving on this lighter gold color, same type of material, it's PLA, and I also tried on this lighter gray, and it really didn't do much. If you're using this laser and you're having issues, make sure you use a darker material. Let's try a couple other things before we jump onto the phone case. You saw me do a mousse print on the potato, let's try that. Wow, that looks really good. Let's try something else. Okay, that is sweet and it looks so clean. So you might be asking, why would you engrave on 3D printed material? They have multicolor printers out there. I have a couple of them, but one thing I like about this is I can print one color, it's faster, and then I can just laser engrave the rest. There are a lot of other advantages, like the fact that a laser can go so thin, thinner than most nozzles that come with 3D printers today. So getting that fine detail that you can't really get with a nozzle on a 3D printer, that's a good reason you might want a laser engraver for 3D printed parts. Okay, I'm still a little skeptical of just printing on the back of this. So before we start the phone case print, let's test on the inside just to make sure it works well. Wow, that looks amazing. I think it's ready. It's time to engrave on the back of this phone case, but something I wanna do is reprint this phone case with a pattern that looks like carbon fiber. I think that would look really cool for a phone case and it's gonna make the laser engraving look even better. So let me adjust this just a little bit and make sure it's right in line and where I want it to be on the phone case. Okay, it's ready, let's hit start. Holy guacamole, that looks so good. I love this, it looks amazing. Look at that outer edge, you just can't print that thin. But this is hard material. You drop your phone on this, it'll most likely crack or break. PLA is not the strongest. So I'm gonna try this again with rubber material that's called TPU. Let me go print this case one last time on TPU. Okay, this is so amazing. This fits well, it looks good. This is now my new phone case and I can still put my wallet on the back of it. So if you're looking to do laser engraving, make sure you start small, make sure you adjust those powers, those speeds. And something I didn't talk about that could be helpful is also the frequency. You'll wanna look at the frequency of the laser. And then the last thing is make sure that it's focused. A lot of laser engravers have an automatic focus. So if that's the case, you shouldn't need to worry too much, but having a focus will make or break whether or not you can cut through metal or you can get that fine detail that that you need. Make sure you subscribe to watch other videos of lasers and also with 3D printing, we're doing a ton of that too. We're done, that's it.